Good morning, everybody. Today's conversation is going to be very straightforward. It is increasing your skills or decreasing your expenses. So I've been thinking about this a lot lately because Pew Research released that since the pandemic, 63% of people are living paycheck to paycheck, and that includes resellers. So one of the more popular things people have been doing to compensate for this is picking up side hustles. So like DoorDash, reselling have become very popular recently because people are not earning enough money. So today I want to talk about a very specific thing. I want to talk about the two ways that you can fix this. Um, you can either lower your expenses, which for some people is, is not possible, but the big ones are childcare, healthcare, um, your housing costs, your car, food, um, and those are the main expenses. And then the main reason for income is that, and this I think is really important and tech talks about it a lot and it's not that popular, but it's the fact that people's skills are not increasing. So you might work the same job year after year after year and your skills remain the same, or maybe they even go down because you're losing your motivation and you don't like your job as much. That's really, really dangerous because everything else goes up. So today I wanna to ask people, how are you reducing expenses and how are you improving your income? For, so with reselling, this is how I look at it. You're either going to have to work faster and do more items in the same amount of time or work more hours. Those are the two ways to make more income on eBay. Now, I don't necessarily recommend working more hours because there's only so many hours in a day. So you need to become more efficient so that you can get more done in the same amount of time. Or you could also learn a higher paying niche, okay, which is becoming harder and harder and harder to do because there's less and less secret niches that people know about. And um, yeah, so it, it's becoming more difficult. So let's see, hold on a second. Let's start with Deanna. You know, what is your, how can you reduce expenses or increase your, um, yeah, um, I, I want to look at all my different expenses, like, um, my fixed bills. The, the only thing I think I have, a I want to look at my, um, internet again, although I think I pay pretty well, it just keeps going up, but I think there's not much cheaper. And, um, uh, I've been trying to, um, just order from one place to get this like for envelopes and things and just stick with that. So I'm not also not wasting time on looking for a cheaper price. Cause I think I do have a low price on the envelopes and things like that. Okay. Um, but, um, and I think my, what I want to work on is to get faster at the listing. Okay. So I like your challenge of 10 things in an hour. I am not there yet, but I did do about eight in an hour. And so I bet I have been timing myself for an hour to see what I can get done in an hour. And then I'm looking back at what kept me from being faster in that hour. So, so. now you have, now you have a baseline. Yeah. So what right. is, ta what is taking a long time? It was, I, well, I had things read. Well, first of all, I had to get things ready and that, of course, that's not part of that hour, but I could be better about that. And if I, I did need to go get something else because there was each time that I've timed myself, something about the books was like, yeah, there's a water stain I didn't see mm. or something that disqualified it enough that I'm not even going to do the listing. I mean, one of them was so stained. I really, this, the outside looks so nice. I just didn't even check and other things in the same lot were fine. So, but, so if I need to have extra things available just to go grab, to photo, to photograph, um, I think that was one of the main things I am trying not to go so fast that I'm making mistakes. So I'm still slower on that end, but um, I just need to get more sure of, um, more sure of it. The, the, you know, once I put the pictures up, glance at it and that's enough and just let it go instead of going back up and down on the scrolling. I think that would, that would make it faster. Uh, let so me ask good. you, yep. should I be, and, and I know we've talked about this, but I, I have my title and I have been copying it and bringing it down to my listing. Yep. Do I need to do that? I Could don't. I save time? You don't? I don't. I don't. But I think 
some people say that it helps with with keyword I mean, with, with uh, search engine optimization okay. but so i've been doing that that doesn't take a lot of time but i do scroll back and forth and i also bring the condition down to the listing too for i assume some people will actually read the description i don't know i do if i buy something on ebay but um so that so i kind of scroll back and forth i think if i just get more in a rhythm of remembering what i've copied and pasted and that would speed it up this is so good because um if you have to backtrack so your items are in the photography station and they're not ready to go or um either they're not ready to go or you find something new that means that your prep stage is needs to be improved yeah. that way when you're in the photo station now this happens to everyone i talked about it yesterday on the shoe call let's say you missed something which happens mm -hmm. you shouldn't be deliberating what to do with that item if you've missed something you should move it to the side and move continue to the next item and that to the side pile usually never gets dealt with and that's why people as they as they do reselling longer and longer and longer. Sometimes the don't want to deal with pile becomes the donation pile and they just move on to the next one. And you have to have more items ready than you need. So for me, we want to do 150 a day. There's, there's actually like 2000 items ready. I don't have, like there's never any time where we have to go get more items. There's just plenty of items ready to photograph. Mm -hmm. So that's huge. And then I'm going to do some listing because we added a new, um, feature. So everyone listening on YouTube, we're now going to do listing um, 15 minutes before this call every day. So I'm just going to share that real quick. Um, so this is why I recommend you have a draft bank. So for me, I'm going to go through my draft bank. Let's just do a couple of these. So I'm going to resume draft. What I'm going to do is this should be done and I don't want to scroll back up. So you mentioned earlier, should I copy and paste the title? If I did, I would copy it now, right? And now we don't have to scroll back up. So I'm coming down. Um, I, I could see if this is the right SKU number. I don't, I don't check this, but I could check and see. The reason why I wouldn't check and see if this is the right number is because I don't want to scroll back up. I want to scroll all the way to the bottom and launch this listing without going scrolling back up. So I think what you mentioned with making sure all the item specifics are correct. So the main thing for me, the most important is the required. So I'm going to make sure... These are all right, brand, size, color. I wanna also make sure like, and this is, see it's size, this is a true size 16. A lot of people accidentally, if it's a kid's pair, they might list it in the women's section because they have similar sizes, but little things you wanna make sure. I personally do not fill out the whole blue, blue circle with a lightning bolt. I just fill out what I can to the best of my ability. So. People were saying, yesterday I called out for lying, saying that there's no way you could do it this fast. But if I, let's just do it together. Title is fine. It's custom SKU is fine. I use the template for condition unless there's something wrong with it. The pictures are in order. These are all correct. I want to check the style and these are flared jeans at the bottom. Scroll down, they're medium wash, solid, they're mid rise. I just put all season. I do all the measurements of the inseam, the waist, and the zip, and the, uh, because I believe that inseam and waist might become required in the future. So I add those in. Scroll down, put all the seasons. They're not personalized. It's machine washable. I have this um, template for my description. If I wanted to paste the title, I would paste it right here. It did not add that much more time. Only added two seconds. It's not a big deal. Down here. Um, I will, I know exactly what I'm selling so I can use the best offer and it doesn't take more time for the auto decline, um, except because I already have it pre-populated. If you had to come in here and check this and figure it out what it is, because you haven't been selling it long enough, don't use it. Just, just turn best offer on. If you don't know what it should sell for, then don't do auto accept auto decline. Scroll Chris. down and have, go ahead. Can I point out something that might save you a couple of seconds? You're yeah. putting in $9.99 as decline offer lower than. Mm -hmm. You can put in 10 there too. You don't need to put in $9.99. Because listen to what it says. Automatically decline offers lower than 10. It won't decline mm. a 10. It will lower than 10. Thank you. So great. That does save me a few seconds. 
Thank you, Jen. So 10 and 10. Um, I have all of my shipping details done. So that's me checking the listing and doing it. But if I was doing it live, and the only difference between doing it live and what I just did is dragging the photos in. It's the same thing. I'm just Chris, launching it. Go ahead. You didn't do your uh, you didn't do your categories, bro. You left it as other and blank. Your store categories. Mm -hmm. You don't do those. I don't. Oh, okay. You don't have categories in your store. You just have your store. Yeah, but I don't because it's it's. Um, I don't think the customers use my store. They shop eBay. Okay. I do that, and it probably adds, you know, four seconds, five seconds to each thing. So. But I have categories so for what it's worth. Yeah. Do you I'll... have do you have a discount for multiple items? I do. I, I charge nine ninety nine. Then if you had categories for multiple years. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you're right. If I had store categories, it might make it easier for somebody to buy more items. I think that's what you're getting at. Um, I don't know because you can search my store yes. with the search bar. You don't have to use the store. I don't think people use store categories, Nick. Yeah. I think in your eBay settings too, you can have your layout when someone's looking at your store sort by either your custom category or by the category that's default on eBay. That's right. Yeah. So my store, unfortunately is 75% women's clothing. I just say that because it doesn't sell as fast as men's clothing. Um, but here on the left, these are the eBay categories. So somebody can click women's jeans and I have 6,400 available. They can click by size, let's see size 14, and I have 197 available and they can just come through here and pick some for the combined shipping. It bothers me that some of my items have top rated plus. Actually, I know, I know why. I actually, um, I'm taking today off shipping. So today's my wedding anniversary. So I'm not gonna ship today. I did, yesterday I changed my handling to two day handling time and I'm not gonna go into work today. So um, that's one of the benefits of having giraffes also. I launched giraffes before this call. So today I can, I can take today off from going into the eBay office. Although that is gonna make tomorrow horrible for shipping, but that's okay. That's the price you pay if you wanna take a day off. Um, let's see, Julesy is saying she's reducing entertainment expenses and becoming more, more, um, educated with technology. That is so smart because technology is not going the backwards. Um, technology is becoming more and more advanced. So by keeping up to date, Julesy, you're future proofing yourself, everyone, like everyone should take a class on how to, how to improve Excel, how to improve internet browsing. You should be doing that because if you're a doctor, you have to do continued education. I want everyone to make doctor income in this group. Um, Thank you, Chris. Yep. Yeah. Isaiah says he checked his listing speed progression and it took two hours and 25 minutes to do 15 items. So, oh, wow, he shaved an hour off of the process in 25 weeks. So that's good. In half a year, Isaiah cut half an hour off of his time. No, 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 no. Oh, an hour. I did 15 the first time, and okay. the second time was 25. I shaved off way more than an hour. So it took you two hours. Oh, wow. Okay. You started yeah, at nine me. minutes of listing, and now you're three, three and a half. Yeah, it took me two hours, 25 minutes, and 38 seconds to do 15 items, which is nine minutes and 42 seconds per listing. And now I can do 25 listings in an hour and 30 minutes. So I'm roughly three times faster than I used to be six months ago. So Isaiah, how, how do you save money? Uh, I don't spend money. I'm one of, I'm one of those people. Like, okay, I just good. don't spend money on anything. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, how, so how do you make more? I think list faster. Um, okay. I, don't, I don't necessarily think it's list more items right now. Um, I think it's more along the lines for me is consistency. If I get, if I can maintain perfect consistency, I'm going to make exponentially more money. Like, cause I feel that if I jump from 25 to let's say 40 again, or 45, 
what's going to probably happen is my listing consistency is going to go down. And if let's say if you end up trying to go up to 45 a day, but you can only list three days in a row or you can only list three days out of the week, that's less listings than if you did 25 every day. So um, the goal is to basically be super consistent, make my store constantly be growing. And um, once I'm selling 25 per day, then I'm going to consider moving up. And that should, in theory, make me allow me to make a lot more money. Just consistency. Um, I want to point something out for a lot of people because a lot of people are, I got to make an entire video on this. How come some people list more and don't sell more? This is like the, I get this question a lot. I'm listing every day. I'm not getting sales. Well, first, you're probably not listing every day. You're probably missing a day here or a day there. So some days listing, you do 16, things yeah. like instant, the number you're supposed to. Yeah, listing, listing daily is actually listing daily. So send me your store if you're actually listing daily. That's that does help, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna have your sales are gonna go up. You have to list items that are in demand at a price that's below the market or at the market. And that is that's really important. If you don't do that, your listings don't count. If you're listing, if you list a um, Marona sweater for $65, that's the same as not listing anything at all. That's too high. Nobody is going to pay that much money for that item. So that's the same as listing zero items. You have to list an item that somebody might actually buy. So that's, that's really important. It's kind of frustrating because people are delisting and relisting an item. And that doesn't count. That's, not, that's the same thing. It's the same item. You need more items for sale. Also, they're listing items that nobody wants at prices that are way too high. That doesn't count. So, um, yeah, but we want to keep this a positive video, so I won't get frustrated with that. But you can't list things that people don't want. That's the same thing as not listing. No, but I think you're being positive because I think one of the things that we want to remember in this business is we need to be brutally honest about ourselves and how we're performing in order to improve, right? Yep. Yeah, it's just simply the quality of the items that you're sourcing, you know, yep. is a, fa a factor of how much you sell. I mean, if you just sell like cheap, regular, common paperback books, mm -hmm. I mean, you're, it's a race to the bottom. Uh, you're competing against nonprofits that can beat you in price and make, make two cents a book. Um, but uh, the, one of the ways that I cut costs was uh, it was a hard decision, but I have a, a large office that I was pretty much using as a warehouse, just, you know, mm -hmm. with racks and, and items. But uh, at this point, I got to conserve the rent. Um, the building got sold. I'll probably get evicted anyway, and they are going to raise the rent. And I figured this time I'm just going to pull everything out and either get a storage unit, which is like 120 bucks a month, or I can probably put a lot of stuff in my attic, you know, box up stuff and just pull it out of there just to save that rent, you know. So it's like, you know, 6000 a year, 7000 a year just there. So for now, I think I'm going to do that, even though it's painful because it's like several thousand items. Um I think that's, that's one month's cash that I could use. I also want to point out that um, usually rent or storage is not that expensive. Like um, as an example, if you were to, if you're paying a listing service, $1.50 per listing, and you save that money instead, so 10 listings is $15, the rent on 10 items is probably like a dollar. So you can save 15 times more money by doing the listing yourself than outsourcing it, than getting a smaller space. The rent seems expensive because it hits you all at once at the beginning of the month, at the beginning of your term, but rent is usually not a game killer. The, the game killer is you're not getting enough listings up um, is usually the thing because if you have a storage unit that's $500 a month and you can pay for it with two listings a day, so I would rather have two listings a day and more space. I wish I knew this when I started. When I started, I would have just gotten a, a double the space that I need and just listed a few more items so I could afford that extra space instead of every single time I run out of space, I got to redo everything again. I, and I, I just don't, like, if I could redo this, I wouldn't have gotten just that, like, I needed 10 square feet, so I got 10 square feet. That's too little. Pay a little bit extra for a little bit room to breathe. Otherwise, you're just stepping over yourself. Also, you can't. Um, sometimes you're, you're feeling really good that day and you get a whole bunch of items that are the same. On those days when you feel like listing, 
maybe you list twice as much that day because you're feeling really good and you're on a roll, but you don't have enough space. So now you can't list the next day because all the stuff that you listed gets in the way. So you just, even though you had a really good day listing, the next day is ruined because you don't have the space to do it. So it's like, um, for me personally, I wish I had gotten a little bit more space and, and um, listed more items. Um, Trisha says she has a, um, an issue with memory, so she copies and pastes the whole title. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Um, that helped her save 45 seconds per listing. That's, that's huge. Um, Nick is saying, how do I approach pants that are not true to size? So what I do is I put in the item specific what size it is. So let's say it's size, women's size 16. So I go scroll down, women's size 16. So the true size, I'm going to put in the measurements for waist and inseam. But I'm going to put what's on the tag on there. And if the item is hemmed, I, I'm not going to buy it. Um, now, I don't have a policy for when it's more than two or three inches off, but I should. Because sometimes pants are stretched completely out of whack. And sometimes they are washed and dried so much that they're really small. So I don't, you know, I should probably have some kind of an indicator, like a big purple um, monkey that says, pay attention, this item is unusual in size, but maybe just try not to pick those up if you can. All right, so just to confirm in the title, you're putting the uh, size on the tag and the item description, you're putting the size on the tag and then the photos lay out the actual fit. And also I add that to the item specifics. I used to not do that, but now I do. Um, because I, I feel like in seam and waste will be item, required item specifics in the future. That's why I'm doing that. Um, so Ash is saying that she rents a studio for storage and sleeps in the kitchen part of it. I, if I wasn't married, I would do that. I would get a live work loft and I would live with my inventory. Um, it's not a safe place for a baby, but I think it'd be a cool, um, cause you, you're just getting started in the beginning and you want to save expenses. So it doesn't, I think that if you sleep at your desk for a year or two and save up a good chunk of money, then you won't be as stressed out when you, um, get a place versus, cause that, that, that counts the time, how far you drive to your storage unit. That's also big. I would, I would also pay a little bit more to have a storage unit that's within five miles of where you live instead of having a long commute to wherever your storage unit is. Um, Diana's saying, decide if you want to be a long-term or short-term seller. That's great. Everyone in here is a long-term seller. Why would you not sell on eBay? Even if you're 85 years old, even if you're 90 years old, like, it's better selling something is more exciting than doing a crossword puzzle. I think you should be doing something. Anthony. Yeah, I was just going to point out, I don't know, of course I live in a country and I've got three acres, but uh, um, there's no storage units near me. So I went out mm. and just got a portable building like a shed. Yeah. And I got a, uh, a 12 by 24 building for 192 a month which was, uh, wow. yeah, I was paying 120 for a 10 by 10, which was like a, a 15 minute each way drive from here. So yeah, for like uh, 60 bucks, I was able to get exponential storage. So it, it might be an option for some people if you got the room. Yeah, I have property. And so my, one of my logic is either use a storage unit just temporarily, but I don't want to hold that much inventory. I want to increase my turnaround and listing more will do that without acquiring more. But uh, what I realized is I could buy a shed, um, uh, like a 10 by 10, which would handle a lot of it for the same price as like 10 months of rent. You know, and it's a one-time cost and not a recurring cost. I, I hate recurring costs. I don't mind a one-time cost. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I, I'm okay with recurring costs if the recurring cost earns me more money. If the recurring cost doesn't earn me more money than it does, like I could even justify a Netflix subscription because um, whenever I watch a TV, like right now I'm watching Big Timber and I'm watching people in Canada try to make money logging. That I learned a lot on how to run my eBay business from that because this is a mom and pop logger trying to compete against 
like commercial loggers. The machines are like a million dollars. And so he had, but he can't afford a million dollar machine. So he buys a $60,000 machine and tries to fix it. And like, he's making it work with like no money. So this show is really useful to me. So I don't mind a recurring Netflix subscription as long as I, I do it, but like a recurring socks, sock subscription, that does not make me more money. So I would, I would cancel my recurring sock subscription and just get some cheap ones. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you. The, the turnaround, I forgot to talk about that. If you sell things faster, sell things faster, you need less space. So my um, new store actually has a 100% sell through. So all of the items will sell every, um, within an average of 30 days. So because of that, if I was limited on space, this is what, what I would do. I would do um, 90% sourcing, 10% listing. If I, I, would, I would literally go out and I would just say, you know what, Patagonia sells really fast. I'm just going to look for Patagonia only and just do that all day long. Look on all the sites, find out where, who's selling new Patagonia. I know all my pricing. It's like the, um, a lot of people like Gary Vee and he used to flip baseball cards. And he's like, when I went to go flip baseball cards, I already knew the value of every single card when I walked in. Same thing. You want to just sell Patagonia only? There was a gentleman in the group that only sold Patagonia, new and pre-owned. So he would go on to Poshmark, buy all of the Patagonia that was underpriced, reflip it on eBay, and go on to Mercari. He would go on to Patagonia.com. He would go to the Patagonia outlet. He would go to all the thrift stores and only look for Patagonia. Sometimes here, the, the thrift stores ask $25 for Patagonia. That's still a good deal if it sells for 80 Right. So if I was limited on budget, I would spend 99% of my time looking for items that sell immediately because I don't want to spend money on space. I don't want to do that because I'm limited. So, so um, one of the things that I did is I did take group's advice and I turned off um, required payment in front payment immediately i turn that off on all my stores and uh, sales have increased 20 percent. and so far nobody's defaulted which was a surprise to me so that was really great i thank the group for that the other thing i'm doing is i've decided to accept almost all offers just because of the space issue so you know i have i don't have to source anymore i have like nine thousand unlisted items unphotographed so I'm not doing that any more sourcing until I get that number down and hence need less space. So I'm accepting any offer. Like if I can make $5 profit on an item just to get it out and get it gone for the space reasons. And then I can start going back to premium pricing. Um, so I'm doing that too. And the, um, so Catherine is asking, do I contribute the fast sell through rate to pricing or item choice? I'm going to go over that real quick and then we'll um, go to Christine. So these are the items that I've sold so far. Um, most of it is trendy. So I sold a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles shirt, um, Patriots, um, Alabama. So like anything related to sports, I'm selling because it's popular. And then if I pick something that's not as popular, then I'm going to price it much lower because I, it doesn't have a following. So I'm picking designer jeans but not just any designer jeans. I'm picking women's designer jeans that have a waist of 27 or higher. I don't want skinny, or I mean, not skinny, but like basically size four and lower. I'm passing on the new store because there's less undersized four people. And I want as many people as possible to be able to buy these jeans. So I'm picking that. For men's shirts, I'm trying to pick XL or larger. In fact, if I was really, really strapped for money, I would pick 3XL or higher. I would just only pick stuff that's, you know, sells, has a higher sell through rate and lower, lower, um, lower supply online. And um, let's see, the majority of the stuff that I'm selling is plus size jeans. It's also extremely difficult to list plus size jeans correctly. So like not that many people are competing with me. When I look at every single item that I'm selling, I bet there's less than 30 people selling the same item. So Eyeball Industries pointed this out in the chat. Um, pictures and description and title can sell any piece of turd. I kind of agree with that because I have an average of 10 pictures per item. 
they're taken outside. Like, okay, this is totally, it's almost like cheating. Okay, let's look at the pictures. Um, let me go to my most recently listed. Okay, let's look at let's look at this pair of jeans. This is a pair of Miss Me jeans. So on Miss Me jeans, if it's embroidered, I use that as the first picture. Okay, so I have, I think, let me see. I think I have all 12 photos on this one, right? I took these pictures outside. You can't, you can't take pictures this accurate with a lighting kit. It's impossible. You can't outcompete the sun for accurate lighting. This is taken outside in the shade. I'm taking pictures of all the measurements, um, all of the tags, all of the RN number, all of the act. Like you can actually see what these jeans look like. If you take a picture, let's look at other people who do miss me jeans on eBay. Let's look at this. Um, okay, here's an example. I, I like. Um, I don't know who used this term, but um, they. I call this a Star Wars photo now. Because somebody mentioned that, you know how the Star Wars in the beginning, the picture is um, warped. And this is a long time ago in a faraway place. That's what this picture looks like because it's flat. So this is a similar pair of jeans to the one that I have. Might be the exact same pair of jeans. Would you rather buy from this person who has one picture and it's Star Wars style? Or my pictures, which show you every single angle, every single detail um, outside um, in different angles, different formats. I have all of the pictures. In the title, I use every single word, including the model. Um, I have the measurement of the waist and the size. I have more keywords. This person has just Miss Me Jeans 27, right? Um, they have one, two, three, four, five. They have eight item specifics. I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I have 22 item specifics. Um, what is my price at? So I'm priced $10 more than this person. So I'm price actually, they're charging $15 for shipping, which is too high. So they're charging $45 total and I'm charging $48 total. So would you rather pay $3 more from my store or from this store, right? The experience is totally different. So I feel like these might even sell for full price, but I'll probably accept an offer of anything Actually, let's go see, because I probably have um, auto decline turned on. Let's look. Um, I do. Actually, I don't care. I'm selling this for $18 or more. It, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to change that because I, I, I don't, in this new store, like I just want to make money as soon as possible. And I can find Miss Me Jeans. Um, every week, I probably find one pair. So it's not, these are not super rare. So I'm not going to wait for, for more money. Also, you can't see the bottom hem. The bottom hems of these might be frayed and you can't tell. So um, also with pre-owned jeans, the, um, they're going to change in dimensions. So without the measurements, it's really hard to buy used clothing, in my opinion. Um, let's see. Oh, someone's asking me if it rains while I take pictures inside, uh, if I have to. But because I take pictures in the shade, usually where I'm taking pictures is covered. So um, also, I just made a huge improvement that I want to share with the group. Um, I found a palette yesterday on the side of the road. So that is now my new, let me pull this up. Um, I went to my storage unit guy and I asked here, let me show this with you guys. I asked if I could borrow a staple gun. So I stapled my carpet to this pallet. So now I, I have a free vertical flat lay station. So it actually does not um, stick because the, the material I got from Home Depot was indoor outdoor carpet. And the reason why I picked indoor outdoor carpet is I never want to replace this piece of carpet ever for this challenge. So um this is not sticky material, which doesn't matter because I'm posting it at like a 45 degree angle. So it doesn't slide off. And this is six feet wide, which is important because it allows me to take pictures like, um, like this now. So I'm now taking pictures in square mode because it's wide enough now 
it wasn't wide enough before because it wasn't six feet wide. Um, but now that I have this set up, um, it, it is, it does require the space for the pallet. And before it was like, um, I could roll this piece of carpet up, which was really convenient. So if I lived in my car, I could just roll that up, park at the thrift store, roll it out, park in the shade, take pictures of my items and list them from my phone. Cause if, I was saying, if I get a million subscribers, I'll do this all over again and I'll start as actually homeless. So I'll save money, figure out how to get a cheap car and then that'll help me go to more places to find goods. And it still will take me 90 days, I think, starting actually homeless. Plus, if I'm, if I'm doing that, I would pro I'm not above um, panhandling. I would panhandle for one or two days to get a couple hundred bucks so I could buy food and start. Because like, you know, you have to do what you got to do. So... Um, let's see. What, what about the wife and kid, Chris? Like, are, are they okay with you starting homeless? For <laughs> so I thought about that. They would be if it was like $10,000 a day. Cause I, I just watched, um, what is that show called? Um, well, it's a show called where they take people who are, are billionaires, undercover billionaire. When they did that, like, um, it was, those people, they don't need money. So how come they were doing the TV show and spending three months away from their family? It's because like they're getting paid a lot of money. And also it's like a, um, I don't know, a good reminder. Cause I don't know the, the spending time away from your family really makes you feel like it's powerful. And hopefully it wouldn't take me that long. It would take me a little bit longer because if I started actually homeless, I'd have to go to the library. It'd be a little bit difficult to take pictures because I wouldn't have a cell phone. So I'd have to like, hustle to get a cell phone a cheap cell phone to start um but it would be exactly the same as this challenge just like maybe one or two months down the road because i'm trying to find stuff for free not like low cost is good too but free is even better um shelly says they won't increase her listings, so they increased my listings after i got 20 sales so i would prioritize sales first um I mean, the best way I found to get free stuff is just drive around to every garage sale at like three o'clock, three thirty, four o'clock, four thirty, and you get a ton of stuff for sale. Even small good stuff like power tools are still there, and they're, they're just like take it because they're going to donate it. It saves them work. Yep, I've driven around on a big garbage day here or there too. I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> I'm not a, if sixty three percent of people are living paycheck to paycheck. They shouldn't be above doing that. I'm not above doing that. I'm, I, I got to make it work. Yeah, you, you find, some, you find some good stuff people throw out. Josie? Oh, yes. There is a great book by Matthew McConaughey. And he it's Green Lights. And he goes away from his family. I believe it's at least four weeks out of the year where he goes and he just goes and isolates himself from everybody and just contemplates life, journals, and then comes back to life. It's a great book if, if y'all want to read it. It's green light. Yeah. yeah, I think people need time together and time, time apart. Yeah, it's a good book. Um, so Husty's Emporium on YouTube says that he's, a, he's in the old school in the belief that the item sells itself. I agree with that. So, you know, when you are a fancy chef, you do the best to, to preserve the ingredient reseller you do your best to show the customer the exact condition that's the key because they know what it is if you put in this is a um a used vacuum cleaner they know what it is you don't need to put in used vacuum cleaner like household um carpet vinyl you don't need to put those keywords because they already know what a used vacuum cleaner is so now you need to describe the condition accurately. So if you take a picture of every single scratch, flaw, you take a picture of it plugged in and it's turning on, you, take a, you make a video on YouTube of you using it and emptying it so people can see that it actually works. That's like telling the customer exactly what the condition is. Um, let's see. Mark says it took him three hours to test and photograph and list 10 items. That's great. So now you have a baseline. That's three per hour, right? I think everyone in the group can get to 10 per hour. 
Diana says that the comfort zone is gone. I know it is a TV show, but it's like people pushing themselves to make it work is cool. Um, Josh is asking how I handled the employee situation at the MacBook. I just told her it's not working for me and I'm going to end our contract. That's it. Nothing fancy. Um, let's see. Um, Tim says, if you go homeless, you can get Medi-Cal and food stamps and you can get a free phone. Oh, that's true. You could get a free phone if you're homeless. Um, but I'm not going to do that unless it's like a huge reason. I'm not going to do it just for fun because I don't want to do that. Um, Isaiah said that Shelly was accused of drop shipping. So, yeah, I would do that, too. If you get accused of drop shipping, go ahead and um, and keep calling until they remove that. I don't usually have that problem because I, I, I have so many pictures that I think that's really the main reason why used clothing sellers or used sellers don't get categorized in drop shipping very often because they have so many pictures. One of the giveaways for a drop shipper is only one picture. Um, let's see. So Shelly, if you want to post your group, your store, we can take a look at it and see why. Um, Jules, you can make a video on YouTube. We can just post the link to it. Uh, let's see. Mariah is asking if someone has ever returned a completely different item. I have, you know, I've even had, I've been selling on eBay for so long. I've had people return an item that's worth more than the item I sent them. Like it happens. So that's why you should be top rated seller so that you can offer the 50% return in, in, in case there's fraud. I sold a razor one time, a used razor, and they sent back a new razor. So I mean, right. She said this Lululemon jacket that was my personal jacket. Yeah. She waited till 29 day mark, said yeah. it was inauthentic, yeah. and then sent a pair of Walmart leggings. Yeah, see, when that happens, the switcheroo happens, then you just refund them 50%. And you could ask eBay, like, look, I haven't had any history of this, so please refund me the whole amount. And sometimes they will. Okay. But yeah, you have to do 50% refund on that. Do I need to get the seems inauthentic removed? I'm yeah. just, she was just trying to get a refund or something. I don't know why she said that. <laughs> eBay will factor in some of the, um, eBay will factor in some of the false item that is described and they will remove it. Okay, because I have 100% feedback and I'm top yeah. rated. So, all right, thank you. So Big Buck Valuables is talking about a 5% penalty for being below standard. So I would not start a new account because your new account will still be below standard because they're all tied together. So in the new store, um, since it's so small, it's easy for me to keep track of the metrics and it has perfect metrics. So this is one of the reasons also why my account was, the limits were raised so soon is because all of the items arrived on time and I don't know if this hap has happened to you guys, but the um, I had one transaction where I uploaded it. Let me see if it was removed. So um, I sold a book that I wasn't done reading. So I sold it the day after, I shipped it the day after it was supposed to be shipped, but it still arrived on time. So I'm not sure if that's why it was removed um, from the tracking uploaded late, but that was the only one that I had late. And you shouldn't start over a new account, you should just fix that account and just take your time, sell things for way below market until you are out of that situation. Um, but if you start a new account, the new account will also be below standard. Um, let's see. So Josh says that media mail always gets scanned late. Oh, interesting. So yeah, media mail is the cheapest post office service. So potentially since it gets scanned late anyway, if you ship it on time, sometimes they will remove it. That's good to know, but still ship things on time. I would recommend if you are just starting, wait in line at the post office and get every single item scanned. Just because you're new. You can even put in your listings. I'm new and I sell my item. I ship my items immediately because I don't have a big inventory. 
I'm literally waiting in my car for you to buy this. Like, <laughs> drive to the post office and send it to you. Um, let's see. I bet you'd get a lot of sales with that. You could say, I have 24 hours of free time because I'm just getting started and I have no job. So as soon as you buy it, I'm going to the post office. I'll even send you a message that I, it's been shipped immediately. I'll try it. I'll try it today. Um, <laughs> yep. Let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's all about saving money and increasing revenue. You can only save so much money, by the way, too. Like me getting a piece of carpet and putting it on a pallet that I found on the street. It doesn't really save me that much money, to be honest. It saves like maybe 50 to to $100 versus just like getting a professional setup. People in the group like Ben who set up that painting easel, that's much better because a painting easel is actually lightweight. This pallet weighs like 50 pounds. So I had to fix it. It's hard to move around. Um, if crack says print a bulk scan sheet. Yeah, you can do that. Um, but I just recommend in the beginning, like you're only selling a couple of items in the beginning. So you might as well wait in the post office, get it scanned immediately. And I wonder if I have that report in the new store, the um, listing quality report. Let me see. I do have it. Okay. I'm going to pull this up and see um, if it tells me my average shipping time. Because eBay keeps track of how fast you ship items. If you ship items really slowly, they're going to not give you as many customers. Let me see. Hmm. While well, I'm thinking... Well, ship really Slowly, what do you mean? Um, like, like I ship within a day, within a business day. Yeah. So if I don't ship within a business day, that's slowly, but I can't control it when it goes through the mail, right? You can't, no. Well, it, I guess they would tra they track your handling time. Yeah. Uh, I mine, mine doesn't stop pulling up for some reason. They track both. They track your handling, your actual handling time, as well as your actual shipping time. However, um, like it's an average based off of all of your sales. So like, let's say if you had one day or two days in which, you know, five packages weren't um, sent when you wanted them to be like there was a delay with the post office. That's not going to count as heavily against you because you have another 150 orders in which, you know, they got there on time. So it's an average. So it, it, those situations in which there are delays shouldn't affect you too greatly. But they wanna, know exactly how long it takes for it to get to the customer. And they know exactly how long it takes for you to actually take it to the post office. That's right. So I want to clear up a couple of things because um, Scott mentioned it and Figgy in the chat mentioned that they use the kiosk in the lobby to scan items. That does not actually stop the clock. It, it, it doesn't stop the clock. So just I just want to clarify that. If it works for you, it works for you, but it's not, that does not stop the eBay clock. That's not an actual received, like um, the scan from an actual worker. Because you could scan the package in the kiosk and then not put it in the Dropbox and just go back to your car. So it, it's, it does have some kind of a record, but that's not the same thing as having the customer, having the item get scanned. So that whoever is saying that online has false information. Does not, it does not stop the clock. Um, although if you do scan it in the kiosk and you put it in the window, they're going to, I mean, post office workers go around and scan that stuff immediately. So it does, um, it, it Chris, will get scanned immediately. Go ahead. What stops the clock? An actual scan by a post office worker. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so Chris, what I found is that when I do use the kiosk, yeah. it doesn't yeah. appear, but as soon as it gets scanned in the post office, yeah. It does appear back to the day that I had the kiosk. So um, as soon as they scan it in the post office or me, me, even down the stream in a processing station, it does enter the first initial drop off. Yeah, so it, do, it will. It will record that. I'm just saying it doesn't stop the clock. OK. All right. Um, also, the um, someone is asking, do you get more traffic if you have a store? That's a good question. 
So theoretically, according to eBay, you do not get more traffic if you have a store. If you list an item or don't list an item, you don't, you don't, um, it should be the same. But in the new store, the first, um, let's see. I got an eBay store subscription after I sold the first 50 items. So that was like, um, let me see here, probably three weeks after I started the store, I got uh, um, an eBay store and the sales I feel like did go up after I had an eBay store, but that's as anecdotal. According to eBay, it doesn't matter if you have a store or not. I know Craigslist Hunter doesn't have an eBay store. So you don't have to, you don't have to. Um, Deborah had surgery and fell one day behind on shipping, but she was able to keep top rated because she has volume. See, that's really important. That's really important. Um, let's see. Um, Where do you uh, change your... Uh, shipping days if you know that like you're going to be out for a day so you're not going to do it one good question uh, let me pull this up right now okay so let's go to this i use business policies and this is another reason why i signed up for an ebay store um okay so if i click here on i'll put this link in the chat hold on a second Put this link in the chat. Let me put this in the link on the chat here. Okay. So um, in your business policies, I use um, one shipping policy. Um, so if I click in here, edit, um, I can come down here and I just changed it back to one business day earlier today because I'm going to ship again tomorrow. So you can change the shipping time right here and it will change it for all your listings at the same time. So if I was going on vacation for two weeks, I could put 10 business days and you will 100% sell less items because it says right here, excessive, not typical. eBay doesn't want their customers waiting for 10 business days before you ship. So that's not going to work. But some people take, this is crazy to me. 30 business days is a six week vacation. Like um, as an American, a six week vacation seems like a really long time, but they have that available. Um, I've only taken a six week vacation one time and it was mind blowing. When I came back, I, I forgot how to do everything. <laughs> so I don't know if people want to, I don't know. It's like, the, there's like that cartoon where um, there's this European that's like, oh, I'm leaving for six weeks. I'll see you guys in, um, in a month and a half. And then there's an American that's like, I'm going in for open heart surgery. You can still text me if you need me. <laughs> like Americans are like always working the whole time. So hardworking country um let's see yeah ed says you can video yourself um opening expensive returns you can do that i try to not sell expensive items to be honest because i don't want to do that um you know if you, if you were selling items that are over 500 dollars, that would be really 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 stressful because every single person is potentially a 500 dollar kick in the butt. Shaney says, do I just have one business policy? I do. I have one shipping policy, one. So, okay. Let's say I'm shipping a, um, I'm shipping a four foot tall plush, right? I'm still going to ship it for seven 99 because I don't, um, um, I don't want to change my business policy. I'm just going to mark up the item 50 or $60 to cover for that. That's just me because I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to keep it simple. One, one policy. And no, I'm not sourcing today, taking today off. This would be the first time in 50 weeks I took off a Wednesday for sourcing. So, um, Mark says that Europeans work hard too, but they prioritize family life balance. I agree with that. It's, I think that Europeans also don't spend 101% of their income, but Americans have a negative savings rate. If they make 100, they spend 101. That's the average in America. 1% over how much your paycheck is, is how much people average you spend. So you can't really um, 
take any time off if you spend 101% of your income, which is kind of the point of this call. But in Europe, people are totally different. The keeping up with the Joneses isn't as hardcore there. Um, Shani is saying, how do you get rid of all the other policies? So what you do is um, you go to your business policies. So here, here's my return. So <clears throat> I have three items here for 30 day returns and, but I'm changing the 60 day returns in the new store. So you click here and then you reassign them. So I'm going to re reassign them to my date. So you select all the different business policies that you have and then reassign them. Let's see if this will update. It takes like sometimes one day for it to update. It's really slow. So don't be, don't be surprised if this takes a long time to update. Um, let's see. Uh, fishing in the Bahamas, take your boat and go for six weeks. Yeah, I, I um, yeah, it's interesting thinking about six week vacation, maybe one day. Um, finding Phoenix is recommending would I recommend buying something big or doing different, anything different if you have good cash flow? So, this is what I think. I think that after doing this for a long time, slow and steady is the way to do it. So if you have a big chunk of change, I would still grow slowly. If you're listing five items a day, I would go to six items a day. Even if you can list 50 items a day, or there's people who are like, I have 50 grand. How do I start eBay? Same as if you have $5. Don't spend all $50,000 when you don't know what you're doing. Because I, I know people who have done that. Like um, I have a friend who's, he asked his parents, he's like, I want to start an eBay store. They gave him $50,000 to start an eBay store. Must be nice, right? And he blew all of it. He spent all of it on wholesale pallets like Jeff in the group. Didn't know what he was doing. Literally broke even. Actually, I don't even think he broke even. He lost a whole bunch of money. And then his parents were like, what did you learn? And he's like, he, he, he basically learned, like, I don't know how to do this at all. I need to start from the beginning. So he switched to... Um, this is a good story for everyone. He switched to Simon Malls. Have you guys heard of this? If, if, um, Simon Malls owns the outlets, a lot of outlets in different parts of the country. So he started by going to um, Simon Mall, going to every single store, looking up all the solds and comps for every single brand. Then he found out for him, the stores that had the best sell-through rate were Coach and Kate Spade. So he got all the items from Coach and Kate Spade, flipped them on on eBay, one at a time. He went to the store, bought one, went home, listed it. Next day, went back to the mall. He spent 12 hours a day at the mall, every day researching every single item. And now he has a seven figure business. So, I mean, it, he, but who wants to spend 12 hours a day at the mall, figuring it out? That's what he did. He just lived at the mall. Uh, actually, his schedule, once he started getting some traction, he had the craziest eBay schedule. He woke up at noon. <laughs> he would get into his car, drive to the mall, stay there until 9 p.m. at night, come home, list the items that he bought that day till like two or three in the morning. He liked to watch movies or whatever he was doing at night. It took forever. Then he would wake up at noon and do the same thing again. He did that for such a long time, like probably eight months in a row. So... Kathy says, can I talk to 30 day versus 60 day? I think it, I think you rank higher if you have 60 day returns. That's why I did that. Um, oh yeah, that's true too. Aaron is saying car culture kills very many Americans financially. I agree with that. A, a normal car costs like between 600 and a thousand dollars a month in the U S a normal car. So that's totally crippling for a lot of people. Um, and my expenses for my car is $125 a month. It's not crippling. Um, also, I got the insurance um, estimate yesterday because somebody hit me at my storage unit and it was $2,700 to, uh, this is what I got for the, the insurance policy estimator. So I don't really know if I should go get a second estimate or just do it. Um, and if there's a... Um, 
subs like uh, I forgot what that's called, but if it's more than that, they have to, I had to submit a request. So maybe it's worth going to a couple of shops and seeing if they can do it for less than 2,700 so that what, there's a surprise. I don't have to go back and get a supplement from the insurance company because that could take a long time and I don't want to waste time. Um, Connor is saying, should I skip the $5 subscription store and go for the $21 subscription? I did. I went straight to the basic store because I wanted the shipping supplies. So, um, yeah. So Anthony, they drove, um, oh, they paid cash for two cars. Yeah. It's, um, there's, there's people in the, in this group that have four car payments, like themselves, their spouse, and then two kids. That's a lot. Four car payments is a lot. Um, so Gary, so far, just one return with 60 day returns and my big store, my return rate. I'm curious. I haven't looked at it in a long time. Let's see. Um, my return rate on the big store. It is 3.99%. And I have 60 day returns. So um, in the la is this 90 days? It's 90 days, right? Um, let's see. I've had 307 returns out of 7,600 and um, 7,696 items sold. I have 307 returns. I don't know what the, what is the math on that? Would you say that uh, you should wait, you know, until your, your store gets to a certain size before you do free returns and 60 day returns, something like that to try to, you know, to be able to absorb it because I feel like one bad day or one bad week could really screw someone over whose store isn't, you know, if you're not at like three, four or 5,000 items, you could really hurt yourself. Oh, hundred percent. I don't know how to solve that. When you're small and you get a couple of returns, I don't know what, how to, how to, how to deal with that. That's very scary. It's especially it's like you, you, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to do whatever you can to push the traffic, yep. but all the things you, you need to do to push the traffic costs you so much money, like getting your inventory up, um, pricing it low, 60 day returns, free returns, that stuff costs. So it's, it's tough to get there. But once you do it though, I mean, this happened to me just a week and a half ago, guys, my business blew up. I can't believe the numbers changed when I went from top rated to top rated plus it changed well, everything. You just, I think, yeah, that, that's what I was about to say. Like then the math works out in your favor. Um, you get, we could probably say that you make at least 10 to 20% more in sales. So that should, and your return rate shouldn't be more than like 2%. And depending on what your category is, it might be higher than that, maybe 5%, but even still, you're going to make so much more money that, you know, uh, the return should be able to be covered by that extra amount that you're getting in sales. Jen, what did you do exactly that, other than free returns? Um, well, I, I was already top rated seller, but I went from top rated plus and did the, I did free returns. Um, I have pretty good. I have a very good track record. I ship very quickly. I had about 1,450 items in my closet. Um, and I, I just watched my numbers just go from, I literally went from an $11,000 to I'm at 13,000 in a week and a half my 90 day total. And it's all been in the last two weeks. Wow. But I understand the cash flow concern. It's, you know, it's paramount. You got to decide if you can feed the family or not. So you, you got to make that call, but maybe you're not big enough yet, but that's your call too. I mean, that's the beauty about being an entrepreneur. Do what you want when you want. Um, so I had... saying... Go ahead. So were you saying, Jen, that the key for you was increasing the amount of inventory you had? No, I, I literally started offering free returns and went from top rated to top rated plus and eBay rewarded me by right. putting out there. I probably have a hundred incorrect item not as described claims and I'm still 
um, I have lower returns because of 60 day returns. Um, and like, I think it's also in the, in the new store, the money I set aside, I, I have set aside a third of the profit. So I have $367 in the new store. I'm sorry, $387 in the new store uh, as like a buffer in case I get returns. And one of the most expensive items I sold is getting returned. And they waited all the way to the last day to return it. So it makes me think to myself what, what um, Mariah was saying earlier. It's probably more common for that on the more expensive items. Because essentially the coat that I sold is being rented because they, they've had it. It was like one of the first items I sold and they, they waited until the last day to ship it back. You know, and it's like, but it, it's not crippling because I saved a third of the, um, the money. But my, my returns went down after I went to 60 day returns. The number of I, I NADs stayed the same. So meaning the people who said it, it was um, fake or, um, missing pieces or damaged in, during transit, all those people remained the same, but the sales went up. How did you, how did you save a third, Chris, on the return? So um, in the new store, the, I made $1,100 profit and I just saved a third of that. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. You, you actually put it back in savings. Okay. I put it in savings just in case. Some, so like, even if I didn't do that and I had like, um, $500. I could have $500 the source, but I have it. We have a special guest. Hello. Chris, would you say that it's better for you to have the return on that 29th day than having it on the first day? Since by that point of time, you've probably already reinvested the money. What do you mean? Like by the time on the 29th day, you've probably already taken the $50 from that sale and reinvested it. So wouldn't that be better than getting it on the first day in which you haven't had time? to reinvest that money yet? No. So let's go back and look. So I, so right now I have $181 to reinvest into the store. Um, but if I didn't take, so I have one third saved. So I have $387 that I'm not touching at all. If I did, right, I'd have $500 to go buy inventory. But I just, because this new store, I'm keeping track of every single penny. I have plenty of money, even with one third savings, because um, I think really the reason why this store is doing so well is because I'm keeping track. I am keeping score to the penny. How much money am I making every single item? So that's why I have such a large savings because I know where every single penny is. Um, and, that, and that's like the, no, I, I'm not going to spend this $387 on more inventory. Even no, though no, no, no. I might have, I might have asked my question wrong. I'm sorry. sorry. What I meant was like, so yeah. on day 30, so you got the return on day 29, right? Yeah, that's I right. I was saying, isn't it better to get a return on day 29 than it would be to get the return on day one? Because by day 29, you most likely reinvested the money and rolled it over a couple of times. The money from their from their original sale. Oh no, they take the money immediately when they open the return. I know. That's what I'm saying. If they took the money immediately on day one, then that would, in theory, be worth ah, it. Interesting. What I'm talking about? Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess it's, it's, uh, it sucks either way, but I guess you're right. I'd rather they open the return on day 29. Actually, in this case, I hope they open the return on day 59. Right? Why not? Um, because Zappos... They waited into, they have 365 day returns. So you could wait till day 364 to return the item. And maybe they had the same mentality as you, Isaiah. Like we're going to flip our money uh, five times before you return it on day number 364. So. Exactly. Um, That's what I'm thinking too. Interesting. Nico says it's a 59 day interest-free loan. Not really, because you have to pay for the return. So um Let's see. Um, free, let's see. Free returns. Oh, yeah. Figgy flips. Going from top rated to top rated plus means that you have one day handling time and free returns. And Kurt, people 100% rent items. It's just part of the game. Like um, the larger that you grow, the more you can have more um, favorable terms. 
and you'll have more customers. Chris, you think that extra 10% savings pays for those returns? Oh, 100%. Also, you have the ability to give a 50% refund in case they screw you. So now, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Can you, can we do that without top rated plus? Can you? Yeah, you just have to be top rated. Okay. And what are the, to do that, I, I only have done that once and that's because it was a brand new item that was opened. Yep. But for a used item, what, if it comes back in any different uh, condition than what you sent it in, you can do that? Yeah, you can do that. I wouldn't no do. Penalty. I don't do it very often, but um, you can do it. Do you have to refund back the original shipping when you offer free shipping? Excuse me. Do you have to refund back the original shipping? Is is that only if it's an INAD when it gets returned with free shipping or free returns? I'm sorry. Um, yeah. You... Go ahead, Michelle. Oh, uh, if if you charge shipping on the outset. Um, if it's an INAD coming back and it's a true INAD, you have to refund them the initial shipping. So if they, even if you have free returns, if they select INAD, you have to pay the shipping back and return the original shipping. But unless I'll you get it. OK, so there here's the caveat. If you get it back and it's not really an INAD. Then you can deduct that original shipping, but it puts it on hold for 10 days. In your account. Yeah where the customer gets a chance to fight it, but then eBay just refunds them and so it doesn't count against you. You can't get a neg on it, but it's a pain in the butt because it sits on your account for 10 days. So you have to kind of measure it as to whether you want to have that sitting on your account for 10 days. But there's no penalty to you for doing yeah. that at all. And the, the it, INET, you say if it's not a true INET, I guess it's going to stay on your account no matter what, right? Well, you should report the customer if it's an INAM and it's not really one, like they say, you know, this doesn't fit like my other whatevers. Right. Um, that's not an INAD, it just didn't fit you. So if you can fight it, you can report it. When you report the customer, it goes to a special team. If they decide in your favor, they look at your whole account history then. If they decide in your favor, it removes it off of your metrics. Okay. Um, so it, it's valuable to report these people that they're doing, because I've had several of them that have been taken off my metrics and that keeps you below that Okay. 5% thing. So when you, when you do the, the uh, refund, you can do less than full, and then it does have that option at the bottom that says report buyer, yes. right? Yes, That's and do that every single time you get like a false sign in. Okay. But I, also I you need to be very careful and use that whole system sparingly. Like if it really is an INAD, eat it. Right. <laughs> like, cause yeah. they, they monitor that. So if you abuse it, they'll take away the privilege from you. Right, okay. Thanks for that, Michelle. Yeah, that's it. That's uh hundred percent on point. Michelle's our, our local eBay rule enforcer. <laughs> <laughs> she knows all the rules better than, than, than we do. Than I, well, I guess it's just important to offer the best customer experience you can afford to. Someone in the chat says that, do I think that one day handling is crippling for new sellers? A hundred percent. If you can't ship in one day, do not offer it. What's, what's crippling is you say you're going to ship in one day and you ship in two. That will destroy your reputation with eBay. Yeah, my do. wife and I both work and there's no way we can do one day. Well, yep. So we're doing two. Yep. So be realistic. Opt for two days. It will affect your sales a little bit, but it's better than having a negative um, experience with the buyer. Ed? I just wanted to go back. That piece of advice she gave there was really good. Offer the best customer experience that you can afford. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's so when you're for everybody. Yeah. When you're huge, you can offer 365 day returns. When you're Nike, you can offer lifetime returns. If you buy a pair of Nikes and you never wear it and you have the original receipt, they will take it back, even if it's five years old. They have that kind of experience. Nordstrom will do that too. Like as long as you're honest and you're not like trying to screw them, they will take the return back because that's how. 
That's, that's, that's the best level of customer service that they can provide. If you're just getting started and you, you say no returns, 30 day shipping, I'm really busy with a full-time job and I just had quadruplets. I'm really busy. I can't ship your item for at least 30 days after you buy it. And I can't accept returns. Maybe that's the best experience you can provide. Just, just be aware that you're competing against people with same day shipping that don't have quadruplets and have infinite money. So it's, this is a lot of people, but yeah, do the best you can with what you can afford. And uh, it, it, when I saw that 63% of people are living paycheck to paycheck since the pandemic, that really blew my mind. Like um, I kind of see expenses going up even more in the next year. Well, so what are people going to do? They need to have more skills or you're going to be left behind. I don't know what's going to happen, honestly, with expenses going up and up and up. What if, what if real estate is twice as expensive next year? What are people going to do? I don't know. So bite your tongue. <laughs> What's well, okay. Tech, tech is only a phase. It'll go away. And then all of the stuff will go back to normal. Um, yep. Well, 